Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at images of a middle-aged patient who presented at outside hospital with chest pain. The clinical team were concerned about pulmonary embolism and patient underwent CT pulmonary angiogram. As you scroll through the CT pulmonary angiogram images, we don't see any evidence of acute pulmonary embolism. I'm just going to pause on this slide take a look to see if you can find any other etiology which can explain patients chest pain i'm also going to show the sagittal reconstructions of the ct pulmonary angiogram again i'm going to scroll back and forth take a look to see if you can find any abnormality which could explain patients chest pain if you take a closer look at the thoracic iota we can see dissection with opacification of the true lumen Again, if I scroll back and forth on the axial CT angiogram images, we can see the opacification of the true lumen with the contrast and no obvious intramural hematoma or dissection flap in the ascending thoracic iota. Patient was transferred to our institution and had a follow-up imaging in few days for further assessment. Patient was not doing clinically well. So we did CT angiogram and we can clearly see type B aortic dissection which starts immediately at the level of the origin of the left subclavian artery. We can see opacification of the true lumen and false lumen and the true lumen is almost slit like. As I scroll inferiorly you can see the true lumen is extremely slit like and the origin of celiac artery is not opacified. This is the origin of the SMA which is occluded proximally and reconstitutes distally. And as you scroll down inferiorly, we can see opacification of the IMA. The dissection flap extends into the iliac vessels on both sides. And as you scroll up higher, you can see that the renal arteries not opacified on the right side with some distal reconstitution. And on the left side, you can see multiple regions of renal infarction. And also if you pay close attention to the liver, you can see large amount of portal venous gas. And on this lung window settings, we can see extensive nematosis of the bowel. Unfortunately, our patient had massive visceral ischemia and did not make it and died few hours after the scan was obtained. So our patient had type B aortic dissection with visceral ischemia. The visceral ischemia in the setting of type B aortic dissection is not a common finding. It can be seen in up to 7% of the patients. And this is a rather unfortunate complication. The presence of visceral ischemia increases the mortality to almost 30% compared to less than 10% in patients without visceral ischemia. In terms of management, these patients can be treated both surgically or with endovascular management and there is no significant differences in outcome. I hope you found this rather unfortunate case of type B aortic dissection with visceral ischemia to be informative. Thanks for your attention.